All right, guys, so this is all the parts and tools you're gonna need to do this project. First, I just wanna say, um, if you have the money, I would just pay to, <laughs> pay to have it done. Uh, but if you don't, you're like me, you gotta bootstrap it. This is what we're gonna need. This is one of the parts I had trouble figuring out um, which one I needed, because there's a couple options. This right here is your evaporator. This is what's gonna be inside under the dash. You got your condenser. We got the compressor. Here's the expansion valve that I went with. That top one is the intake air filter. And that bottom one is your cabin air filter. We're gonna be pulling it out when we do the uh, evaporator anyway. We got our new AC lines from UAC. That's our low pressure line. This is our high pressure line. And since we are going to the 134A system, you're gonna need some PAG 46. And then I like to put a little dye in there. You don't need very much, just a little bit of dye in the lines. That way if you have a leak, uh, it's gonna be easy to find. <sighs> be careful on this stuff. I will say, um, if you're doing the 134A conversion like this, make sure you get some 134A because like if you're buying on Amazon, they a lot of times will put like a natural gas in those cheaper cans or like a propane or whatever and it says 134A replacement. No, you want 134A refrigerant. The National is a, a tried and true brand. They've been around a long time. Can't go wrong with them. Um, we're gonna be go ahead and doing the coolant while we're in there. So we've got some coolant there um, The tools you're gonna need I'm not sponsored by these people um, These were just I've read the reviews these had good reviews and they were affordable uh, So you're gonna need a vacuum pump You're gonna need at least a set of three-way gauge three valve gauges. This is a four valve gauge um, because I plan on using this later down the line for other things, but you need at least a three valve gauge All right guys, so before you start make sure you have your lines Evacuated by a professional shop or if you want to buy the machine and do it yourself um, You know that that's great, too. So I already had my lines evacuated so uh, We're ready to start pulling it apart um, because those lines are pressurized and they do have freon in them and it is bad for the environment so you don't want to just let that freon out into the uh out into the the air you know they say it damages the ozone layer i'm not sure but anyway guys that's enough talk let's get to it
Yeah, I got that fucking tab right there. See, nails. They make it to where you gotta fucking take it all apart, piece by piece. So somebody's got to come all the way out. One more fucking trim fucking piece god damn ah uh, i probably broke every fucking one of those man i hate those things all right now we can take this cross member set it out of the way Up like that boom now we have access to the condenser All right, this bumper is bothering me. I need to get it out, so. Those little gray clips right there. You can just take a flathead, push on that top piece through the opening. I almost got this thing off, fuck. I may just take this top part off. Yeah. I'm gonna take this top part off and then I'll get back with y'all. It's just uh, Phillips there, 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 and right there. It's just those Phillips. We're gonna leave that bottom part of the grill and they're gonna lift these tabs up and it'll come straight off. So let me get that done. I'll be right back. All right, so if you're doing this job, you don't have to take the fucking bumper off. Don't do what I just did. It's a waste of fucking time. But basically, if you wanted to take it off for some reason, say you're doing a job, you have to take it off. That's what it looks like, okay? So where that meets right there, it looks exactly like this right here on the top, but it's on the bottom. But it's the same principle. You're gonna lift that tab up and then it's gonna pull right out. Losing daylight, boys. All right, that one's loose. Let's get this one. I right, got it. All right, got it. All right, guys. So, off camera, what I did was I just took off the high and low pressure lines and uh, to the condenser this top and this bottom you can see right there top and bottom so uh there's a bolt that holds each in 10 millimeter um the top one wasn't bad to get off i got it off pretty quick but uh that bottom one is a little bit of a pain in the ass i couldn't imagine doing it with the grill on for sure so i'm glad that i took the grill off to do that um it's definitely going to make it easier to get the new condenser back in um so the condenser comes out like this. You're just gonna kind of force it against the radiator. Don't mess your radiator fins up, but squeeze it behind these headlight posts right here. And we're just gonna pull her out. God damn. Come on. God damn. There we go. We got her out of there. Thing was dirty. 
Come on, dude. Fuck me. I hate these things. There we go. Cut that off. Wow, that is black. I wonder if that's from the seal or the metal in it they were talking about. Supposedly this is fucking 30% like working. I guess it's like 70% clogged. What the fuck? That's pretty pretty bad. I wouldn't even think they'd be able to evac it if it was that bad. But whatever. <sighs> There's the expansion valve right back there. There is two little hex bolts in those where it looks like it's plugged. There's a little, it looks like a little plastic sleeve, I think, that comes out. Let's reach back with a needle nose and pull that bitch out. Come on. Yeah. Oh. I know there's a couple hex bolts in there though that gotta come out. I think, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that sits in there like that. Now, y'all, so, uh, I was actually way off. You don't need an Allen bit, you need a star bit. Who would've, who would've thought? It's gonna be a T25. This is what I rigged up. This is an Apex, uh, that Makita makes. Um... You can go to like Lowe's, Home Depot. You're gonna need something like this because this is a T25 and it's too short and it won't fit into that apex to make it work. That won't, it'll fit into there, but it won't fit in the hole. So it's gotta be longer like this and uh, quarter inch socket. You know, make sure you got good pressure when you're breaking it loose. So you don't strip it. You definitely don't want to strip that bitch out. So I got one broke loose. Let's get the other one out. Probably gonna need a magnet to get those out too after they <coughs> get loose. Wow. was fun my guy all right so now we're gonna grab that center bolt again thread it in a few threads give that a tug it'll come out all right I got that center thread that center bolt threaded back in a few threads now we just got a tug on it and it should come Hopefully. Yeah. Got it. Wow. So 
there it is so yeah get that threaded in wiggle up and down keep pulling on it you'll get it worked out of there it's the next day <laughs> um yeah i ran out of daylight last night it's getting too hard with the flashlights all right so we're gonna take this one step further we're gonna go ahead and remove this radiator i got all the new coolant for it already so we might as well take it out i need to clean this bitch anyway so if you look on the right side of the car the passenger side very bottom there is a white valve you're going to turn it that'll open it so we're going to open this up we're going to turn that valve i got a drain pan under there we're going to drain the coolant out take these hoses off disconnect this wiring this drain tube and then uh you know disconnect fans then we'll be able to pull a couple tabs here and there and pull this uh assembly out, this radiator assembly out ah, still draining all right so all we gotta do is pull this hose that bottom hose and this will lift straight out so i'm gonna get those hoses pulled and i'll be right back Stud stand on that one. It's fucking weird. Alright. Can reach that motherfucker. There's one more clip right fucking here. Alright. That looks like it's gonna be a pain, dude. see let's see if we can work it out there not like we're saving it but it's still a pain in the ass get out Okay, there we go. Holy shit. So we got the, uh, this connector disconnected off the compressor. It's time to pull it now. So, let's go and get our 12 on. So there's two keeper keepers pins whatever you want to call them right there on that left side one top one bottom you got two of them make sure you don't lose them all right 
so the evaporator is under all of this bullshit all this has to come out so uh it's pretty much like a puzzle we're gonna have to just figure it out as we go um i've never taken this thing apart before in my life so let's just get into it start taking shit apart try not to break anything Please don't break. Whoa. Turn tool. So it's a twist and pull. Let me try to figure something out on this bit real quick. There's two different sizes too. So I'll be right back. Get a flathead and work it loose. on this other side. Oh, hell yeah, I didn't break it, thank God. Sorry, y'all can't see that. It's got a push tab on the right side. broke it. Damn. I'm gonna take a picture of that shit real quick. I'll forget that motherfucker. Disconnected from the blower. I'm gonna push this out of the way. Push the harness out of the way. Alright. You're gonna need a deep tin to get that bottom one. And those weird looking ones are number seven. Fucking seven mil. Fucking weirdest shit ever. Who the fuck put seven mil on their shit? Dry 
drop this off in a fucking nowhere. I hate working in floorboards. I probably said that. I'm probably gonna say it a hundred more times. But I fucking hate it. I couldn't see it because there was a uh, there was something actually in front of that. A minute ago. Oh, what the fuck? Yep, right there. There's one more right there. Wow. Right up under there. There's one more. That's the last one, too. Okay. Baby. Oh. Please be the last one. Oh, wow. All right. We're gonna take this out to get to the very last bolt. I see it, now feel it, it's the last one. I'm just gonna drop that down. Hopefully I can get to it, it's back in there. So there's two ears that come off the top of this thing. One there, and one on the other side. This one on the other side. There we go. Oh. Yes. Good old magnet trick. Let me get this out and I'll get back with you. I'm sure I'm gonna have to wiggle, wiggle, and it'll come out. Guys, <laughs> I can finally see the evaporator. Um, I really wanted to video that for y'all, but dude, there's no room right where that motherfucker is. There's no room at all. It's it's so fucking tight. But I'm gonna go ahead and walk y'all through what I'm doing. So this is a blend door air actuator. This is what blends the air and changes directions, all that stuff. So I went ahead and numbered them because the connectors all are the same. So I numbered the connector and the device. I wasn't sure if it mattered. I'm sure it does. So just to be safe, go ahead and mark them. You know, one, two, three, four. So one assembly, you got two like this. And then you got another assembly right here with two on it. So, there's a ton of these bolts just like this right here. All the way around it. You can see. I'm going to lay this up here so I can show you. One here. One there. One there. One right there. One right there. I went ahead and took that one off first. It's kind of a pain in the ass. You're going to have to wiggle it pretty pretty good to get it out of there. That one sits up here. You can see right here, that's our evaporator. That's our evaporator lines. Go to our expansion valve on the other side. So now we got to get this assembly off.
think this is sealed so it's probably gonna make some noise or let some air out i'm not sure i think it's pressurized right now so better find out what i did is i took that rubber tape that was on this one and i took it and rubbed it wrapped it around this Yep, that's good. So that's been pressurized. We're gonna lubricate those seals and throw it in. All right, so a couple tips real fast. You're gonna wanna have a magnet when you do this because it's really a pain in the ass or magnetic uh, sockets, one of the two. And these bits with the S on them, I mean, these uh, bolts with the S on them, those are uh, 7 uh, 30 seconds or 5.5 millimeter. I wish I had mag magnetic sockets. Damn. Because this is a pain in the ass. And there's three, three or four back here, man. So I don't miss those. Also, when you're putting the uh, evaporator in, there's a little foam pad. I suggest you put it all together without the foam pad in there and then go to the front on the other side of the firewall and then put the foam pad in that way. It's way easier. <laughs> it's almost impossible to do it from back here, I think. I'm gonna finish putting these bolts in on the back side and then I'll be right back. Alright, these are your blend door actuators. You got one, two, three, four of them. I still gotta put that fourth one in right there. But make sure you get this one in right. I mean they all go in, need to go in right, but this one's tricky. I uh I didn't put it in right the first time, so I had to take it back off. Because if, if you feel like it, there's any tor towards like type of pressure when you're putting that on, then you did something wrong because it should just slide right on and sit there just fine. It shouldn't push back on you or nothing. If it's pushing back on you, then you got it in wrong. There's a little gear at the top on the other side of this up there at the top. And it fits into a uh, like a tooth hanging off the back that does this. And there's a flat spot in that gear and that's where that tooth needs to go. It goes right in that flat spot on that white gear. And then these little knobs right here are what go in these little white things. These little white um, uh, levers. So make sure you got those in the right orientation as well. Or else it ain't going to work right. These kind of only go in one way. I mean this does too. They all only go in one way. But you can get them in like tweaked a little bit to the left or right or even though it'll bolt up doesn't mean it's in right so make sure you take pictures and you make sure you get that in right i finally got it in i wish i could show the other side to you but you can't see it i'm having trouble i'm having trouble as it is even getting this video because it's so tight under here if you don't have mag magnetic sockets, I suggest getting some for this job. But also you can stick like 
some sticky putty on the end of your socket and that'll work too for these that's what i'm doing right now it's gonna go in something like that but i got i gotta fix it it's not catching the fucking gear the fucking lever so let me get this bitch in i'll get back in a second Should do this for a quick pan run. Fuck yeah. Alright, that goes in there. Alright. Don't wait till the last minute to put those fucking blend door connectors on. Do them before you put the fucking blower up. Don't be dumb like me. I'm starting out there. Okay, but tell me if I need to go get Justin Jackson's five o'clock now. I messaged her, she didn't write me back. Okay. Alright, so green one plugs in there. Boom, baby. Got it. It's gonna be quarter inch, baby. Be careful because that is cast aluminum, it's not fucking steel. Oh, that's, that's right.
all right so your compressor should come with instructions on how to install it uh, some of them come for pre-filled some come pre-filled with shipping oil and the shipping oil you want to dump it out and then um, put the oil you're using in it the, the correct amount uh, I usually put half in the compressor half of what I'm going to use so like this system's taking four four ounces of pag 46 uh, so I'm gonna put two ounces in the compressor and the other two will go through the lines since they're brand new lines you want to get a little bit of oil going through them so I filled this up half the oil I needed turn the clutch about eight ten times tight but you don't want to strip out the lock because it's aluminum do the connector I got a new seal put on here this is ready to be connected to this line I switched my sensor over I put a new seal on the end of it the rest of these already have seals on them I'm pretty sure um, but I went ahead and greased that seal so we're gonna go ahead and I've been using dielectric grease we're gonna go ahead and grease these seals and this is ready to go on so also that expansion valve bro y'all just get the fucking spend the extra money Get the OEM motherfucking lines. I will never buy aftermarket lines ever again. I swear to fucking God. These aftermarket lines made this job way fucking harder. Spend the extra money and don't fucking struggle like me. I wouldn't be surprised if these fucking lines didn't leak. sitting there like that So we got our manifold gauges, we're set up and we're ready to vacuum the system. Another thing I wanted to say is I really like this set also because it comes with the uh, 1234YF hookups um, and the 134A hookups. So and don't worry about getting them crossed or anything. None of these are the same size. Um, they only fit on what they go on. Even if I wanted to cross those two right now. They wouldn't cross because they're made specifically for those fittings. So let's go ahead and open us up here. We're going to pull this to the negative 30 on the blue line. We're 
I want to make sure we're closed here. Here. I'm going to start this up. So we're going to do this for about 45 minutes. This is going to verify that there's no leaks in the system. This also pulls, pulls the moisture out of the system. <coughs> you don't want moisture in the lines because it'll damage the compressor and everything. Then we'll shut this off and we'll leave it and make sure it sits on the negative 30 for at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes. All right, it's been a little over 45 minutes. It's been about 50 minutes, 55 minutes, something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this off and see if it holds. It might move just like, you know, up to five, but it shouldn't go much more than that. Well guys, we did it. Um, I've been driving this car for about three, four hours now. And I don't even know if it got this cold before. Like on the old AC uh, Freon, the uh, 1234YF. I'm not sure it even got that, as cold as it is now. I wish I had a thermometer so I could show you. But it'll freeze you out of here. And I, I don't even have it on max AC. It gets ice cold, dude. I mean, it's pretty fucking awesome. This is actually my wife's car, and uh, you know, the wife was like, hey, my AC's out. Uh, I was like, damn. So I didn't even know anything about the old Freon, new Freon, like I know, you know, I haven't done a whole lot of AC systems. Like I've done a few AC systems, but it's always been the 134 systems. I didn't know about the new stuff, so. Um, so it was a little bit of a learning curve there, uh, especially on these newer Hondas, there's a lot of difference from, you know, my old truck to this. So, uh, yeah, guys, definitely, you can put 134. Uh, don't cross-contaminate them, you know, the Freons. But I say if you're replacing all the fucking parts anyway, go back with the old 134 Freon. It's, it can do it. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. It doesn't freeze your fucking expansive expansion valves or fucking mess up your evaporator. You don't do none of that. Don't let them fucking scare you. Um, this totally works. And I know for sure it works on... Um, all the Honda Civics, the Ridge Lines, like pretty much every Honda you can do this with. Because even if you looked at when you go buy your parts, just look at the specs. Almost every part says 134A slash 1234YF, so it can run on either. You just don't want to run. You don't want to mix the Freon, uh, the two Freons together. That's a win in my book. I tried to um, show you all as much as I could in the video. 
Um, sorry there were some parts I had to skip. The uh, One of the things was the evaporator, um, where it went through the wall, the tubes weren't bent right. So I had to kind of put the expansion valve on, put a long bolt in the center, and fucking bend it to where it needed to be with brute force uh, and some pry bars. Thank God I didn't crack any um, joints or anything, but I didn't show that. I wish I would've got it in there. I just need a better GoPro setup. Uh, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and uh, I'll get to them as quick as I can. And uh, if this video helped y'all guys at all, just please consider consider uh, liking and subscribing. Uh, it really helps me out. Um, I make these videos for y'all. I wanna help y'all out um, because especially on these Honda Pilots, since they're so new, there's not a ton of uh, content on the uh, on YouTube yet uh, covering covering them so uh, I've been trying to make as many videos as possible on the on the Honda Pilot every time something breaks I put it on YouTube because uh, you know I want y'all to have that content also